Hey, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Connect. Happy Mother's Day. If we can get the iPod off. Come on, y'all. Come on in the building, y'all. Welcome. Happy Mother's Day to you. We're going to stand up and worship our Lord and Savior this morning.
there's nothing else worthy of our undivided, unreserved allegiance. You are. Lord, we declare that you're holy, that you're righteous. Jesus, we declare that in our lives, corporately and individually, you are Lord. You are our supreme and authority. You are our last word. You have the final say. Lord, your perspective is higher than any other opinion. Jesus, we pray that in us, that your kingdom would reign. Lord, that through us, as we go about our lives, that your kingdom would be expanded. Your kingdom would be moved forward. Lord, change our hearts, mature us to the place that we could be used to move the kingdom forward. Jesus, we know that there's coming a time when every knee will bow, whether they like it or not. Every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that you're Lord. Some of those people won't like that, but they will. Some of those things, principalities, powers, rulers won't like that, but they will battle. But Lord, we do it willingly. Lord, we do it now. Lord, we don't wait until then. We do it because we want to. We do it because we see the value in who you are. We see that you are worthy, that you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We see you not as a, a sacrificed lamb only, but as a risen Savior and King. The King of kings, the Lord of lords. Jesus, we pray that in our hearts, in every area, in every crevice, in every shadowy place that your light would shine and you would become Lord. 
supreme above all. Jesus, we lay down all of our hopes, all of our dreams, all of our plans, because yours are better. Not just because you require it, but because we know that your plans are better, that you're much smarter, that you're much more intelligent, that you see more than we do. We give ourselves over to you because it's better. Lord, it's not a sacrifice to serve you, it's an honor. Jesus, we worship you here in this place. We pray that today would be a day that there would be people who would look back and say, that is the day that everything changed. The day that I laid down my life, the day that I laid down my will, the day that I laid down my plans, the day that I laid down what I thought was the most important and submitted it to the Lordship of Christ, that today was the day that everything changed. We love you, Jesus. We honor you here in this place corporately. We honor you individually with our lives. Take our lives, Lord. Do what you will. Send us where you want us to go. The Lord just reminded me of something. Just reminded me, gave me a snapshot. I was about 23 years old. And I was in this... <laughs> we used to live in a place called Shady Acres, Mobile Home Park. You like that? Shady Acres. And it was. We lived there, and I, I remember sitting in my little gray S10 pickup truck, little five-speed, stinking like everything that I had done and been doing. I can remember him coming in that car. He'd begin to call me, begin to speak to me about what he had for me. And I remember telling him, Lord, you can have it all. I'll go wherever you want. I'll do whatever you want. I'll say whatever you want. And Lord, I don't care what it costs. I want you. Asking, you mean that? Yes, Lord, I do. For some of you, I believe there's coming a time that the Lord is going to put you in a situation, quite honestly, where you're going to have to make a decision. Is it going to be your way or is it going to be His way? Is it going to be your plan or is it going to be His plan? Is it going to be your insecurities or his hope? And my prayer for you is that you will be able to answer. Lord, I got nothing. And I'll go wherever you send me. I'll do whatever you ask. I'll say whatever you want. And I don't care what it costs. Lord, we honor you here. If that's you, and you feel like that's, that's in your heart, I just ask you to respond to it today. Lord, I'll go wherever you send me. I'll do whatever you ask. I'll say whatever you want. Lord, you can have my entire life. I hold nothing back. We worship you here, Lord, with our lives, not just with our voice, but with our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I love you. Do this. Before you sit down, turn around and welcome somebody to Connect Church. Let them know you're glad they're here.
Hey, good morning, Connect Church. It's so glad to see you here this morning. Let's go ahead and find our seats. Hey, ladies. Say hey. Okay, it's right, church. Hey, ladies. Say hey. <laughs> good morning. I want to say happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. We're so excited that you're here with us. Hey. <laughs> We're so excited that you're here with us today. We have an amazing service planned, but first I wanna let you know what we're about. We're about connecting people to God, to people and to purpose. That's what I'm saying, I heard it right here. Okay, y'all, you ready for the verbals? You ready? ready. Are you ready, Lawan? I'm ready. Are you ready? Okay, that's what I'm saying. Okay, so here are our verbals. We have three of them today. Next week, immediately after service, we're going to have a family meeting, family business meeting. If you want to know a little bit more about what's going on at Connect Church and you want to hear some more um, about where we're headed and vision for the future, you're welcome to join us immediately after service next week. Our second verbal announcement is preach at the beach. We're going to get preach at the beach, y'all. It's preach at the beach time. If you want to get baptized again or for the first time, we have a sign up for that, and we're so excited. This is a great event, a great opportunity to invite friends, to invite people who uh, may have visited in the past. It's a great opportunity to re-invite them, and uh, we're very excited for that. I'm excited to eat, too. We're going to eat. <laughs> and our third and last uh, verbal announcement is we have a guest speaker coming in. It's Pastor Kelly's um, uh, pastor and and mentor, thank you, that's the word, pastor and mentor. He's gonna be coming in to preach on uh, June 12th. He is going to be speaking on the power of the spoken word, the spoken blessing, and he's a world authority uh, on that. He's been all over the world to speak about that, okay? Great, if you want infor more information about the other events going on at Connect Church, we have a list outside in our Welcome Home Center, and we have uh, all of them listed on our website and on our app, okay? As you know, <laughs> there are many ways to give here at Connect Church. You can give via the offering boxes on the back of the wall here and in the lobby. Uh, you can give via our app. We have our app, our handy dandy app. We can also, where you can also see our events and uh, some other fun stuff on the homepage and where you can find sermons. Also our Devo, we also have our Devo on our app. Um, yeah, let's pray. Let's pray over that offering, okay? Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to serve our community, God. Father, I just pray that everything that is um, taken as tithe and offering today, Father, would be blessed. Father, would be multiplied. God, I pray right now that uh, we would be able to use it as you see fit, Father. We would be able to use it to help others, and we would be able to use it to advance your kingdom, Father. Help us be good stewards. And, Father, bless those uh, who give to your kingdom and your mission and your purpose. Father, we praise your name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hey, ladies. Hey, ladies, guess what day it is? It's Mother's Day. I know I already said it, but it's Mother's Day. I'm so excited to tell you that we have a gift for you after service in our Connect Coffee area. If you are a expecting new or visiting mother, you can grab the bags with the white bow, and those will be specially for you. But all of our mothers get presents today after Mother's Day, okay? Okay. So I'm very excited, like super excited to announce that Pastor Marsha is going to be preaching today. And I'll go ahead and have her come on up. It's Pastor Marsha. It's Pastor Marsha. Doesn't she look cute today? Look, her shirt matches the background. That's what I'm saying. Um, before, before I go into the word, um, really quick, I'd like to invite somebody, um, up here really quick. Miss Yvonne, would you come on up, please? As you can tell, Miss Yvonne has no idea why she's up here, which is, but, that's, but that's perfect. Isn't it perfect? It's just perfect. Listen, um, 
I wanted to just share something with you um, about your Mother's Day gifts today. Um, so there's this book, and it's called His Faithful Love Endures Forever. And um, Miss Yvonne wrote this book. Yes, Miss Yvonne wrote this book. And um, all of you are going to be receiving it today, ladies. Um, so uh, I, I just, I'm so excited um, that Miss Yvonne had the, the opportunity to publish it and put it together, and then we have the opportunity to share it with you all. So uh, can you tell us just a little bit about your book? is so interesting you said this because I was just talking to God a lot about this this week I'm like God I wrote this book you told me to write and nobody's reading it I don't know what you're doing and then <laughs> so, so okay I'm, I'm understanding a little more but it is all about God's faithful love to me throughout my life which started when I was four years old in a bathroom when I was um, my mom was very ill and I had to um, go to the bathroom, and there weren't family bathrooms like that. You just sent your child in there. Well, I knew how to latch the door, but I couldn't get it unlatched, and I started crying. The only thing I could remember is the song I learned in Sunday school, Yes, Jesus Loves Me. And I started saying that, and this woman said, Are you okay? She crawled under, let me out, washed my hands, got me back to my daddy, and it started there, his love for me throughout my life. And that's just small uh, snippets of um, how God has shown his love. That's so awesome. Well, um, so these are in, in our Mother's Day bags, but we didn't want to give you your own book. So there is a, a different gift in here for you, okay? God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. this book somehow so she didn't see me walk up with it. I stuck it inside the journal. All right. In just a moment here. Okay. So I feel like everything in the service so far has just set me up for this message today. Um, and this is something that's been on my heart. There's two scriptures um, that have been rolling around in my mind um, for months, literally months. And I was asking the Lord, Lord, what, what am I going to speak on? And, and uh, I was like, come on, God, usually you got me some, something by now. What's, what's up? Speak to me. And I uh, really felt like the Lord said, well, what's, what's been going through your brain? You know, that's, that's what you need to share. So anyway, um, the two scriptures that keep going through my mind and I didn't even <laughs> y'all didn't even realize they were in the same chapter but they are and it's uh, Matthew 6 um, and so Jesus is talking to the disciples and um, he is they've asked him you know teach us how to pray and he says our father who art in heaven hallowed be your name here it comes my favorite part your kingdom come and your will be done on earth right here right now right here as it is in heaven at the same time it's a parallel kind of thing right on earth as it is in heaven and i love that scripture i say it all the time i tell kelly i want it real big across the back of the back of the room i want it over there <laughs> like we've had lots of ideas he's like you know just hold on <laughs> let's make a plan first before you just splatter it everywhere okay um, and then um, the other verse is, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you. Both of those have the kingdom of God in it. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. And this is the thing that just, you know, there are certain scriptures that just touch your spirit, and you're like, mm, that's so good. It's like every time I say it, my spirit jumps and uh, the, the kingdom of God is is what we're supposed to be bringing to the earth what we're supposed to be uh, experiencing here 
is the kingdom of God and, and what we're supposed to bring to the world is the kingdom of God. And so I just want to start with that. Those scriptures are in there uh, throughout the message, but I just wanted to start with that. You know, I don't do theme, thematic messages very well on special holidays and things, so I apologize for that. But listen, I, it does apply to moms, right? It applies to moms. It applies to mothers. It applies to everyone. You know, it's our desire, mine and Kelly's desire, that people walk in freedom. That's it. That's it. Just walk in freedom. Be subject to the king and walk in freedom. Be subject to the king and walk in freedom. That's really what we're all about. When you, when you break it down, that's what we want. We want you to be free and living out your life the way that, that God would have you live your life out. And the kingdom of God, you know, was actually a very important subject to Jesus and to the disciples. And oftentimes we look at the, the life of Christ and the things that he did and how he treated people. And we say, well, that's what we need to be doing. And that is true. But I didn't realize how often he talked about uh, the kingdom of God. And uh, so let me just read you a couple of scriptures. Um, now, I want you to keep in mind, too. After his burial and resurrection, he appeared to the disciples after that for almost six weeks. Isn't that crazy? Almost six weeks, he appeared to them, and he was filling in their gaps of understanding. You know, there were things that they heard him say, and they were like, what are you talking about? We don't even understand. And after his death and burial and resurrection, things were starting to come together. And he appeared to them for six weeks on and off, and, and he, he tried to help them connect all the dots from what, what they had heard and what they had seen because they were birthing this thing to take, to take out into the world. And so he, he met with them for six weeks, and he instructed them about the kingdom of God. Acts 1-3, I'm just going to read some scriptures. Um, to these he also presented himself alive after his suffering um, by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of things regarding the kingdom of God. I want you to just listen for that phrase, kingdom of God. And the disciples in turn preached the kingdom of God. Acts 8, 12, but when they believed Philip as he was preaching the good news about the kingdom of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were being baptized. Acts 14, 22, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying, it is through your tribulations that we must enter the kingdom of God. Acts 19, 8, and he entered the synagogue and continued speaking out boldly for three months, having discussions and persuading them about the kingdom of God. Two more. And when they had set a day for Paul, people came to him at his lodging in large numbers. And he was explaining to them by solemnly testifying about the kingdom of God and trying to persuade them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and from the prophets from morning until evening. And then Luke 17, 20, 21. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, this is the Pharisees talking to Jesus, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither, neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. There are some translations that say the kingdom of God is in your midst. But when I was studying this out, I noticed that in your midst is probably not the best, um, the best wording for that and I had a side by side I was looking at King James Version and I think NASB when you go back to the Greek and you look at exactly what that word means it's within you it's not in your midst it's actually within you and it's uh, also used one other place where Jesus is telling the uh, uh, the, the Pharisees that they don't you wash the outside of the cup but not the inside and it's that same word inside. It's uh, entos, E-N-T-O-S, entos. It means within you. He says the kingdom of God is within you. That is crazy to think about. That is crazy to think about. 
that the kingdom of God lives within me. You know, my, my favorite scripture, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then Romans 14, 17 says this, for the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is what we're talking about, is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. What is the kingdom again? Righteous, I'm sorry, not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So today I want to talk about the kingdom of God. But I want to look at that word kingdom. When I look up that word kingdom, it's royal power, kingship, dominion, rule, the authority to rule over a kingdom, the royal power and dignity conferred on Christians in the Messiah's kingdom, a territory subject to the rule of a king, so a kingdom is a territory. And what, are, what do we know is part of a kingdom? There's a king, right? There's subjects. We're his subjects. Territory. And there's governing laws. In a, king, in a kingdom. When you think about an earthly kingdom, you know, we, we don't have a whole lot of experience with an earthly kingdom. We don't have a king that rules here. Um, we know a little bit about it. But what do we know about this king, God? Isaiah forty twelve. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and measured the heavens with a span and calculated the dust of the earth with a measure and weighed the mountains in the balance and the hills in a pair of scales? Isaiah 14, 27, for the Lord of armies has, has planned, and who can frustrate it? And as for his stretched out hand, who can turn it back? He's an all-powerful king. He's a creative king. 1 Chronicles 29, 10-13, so David blessed the Lord in the sight of all the assembly. And David said, Bless are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Indeed, everything that is in the heavens and on the earth, yours is the dominion, Lord. And you exalt yourself as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. And in your hand is power and might, and it lies in your hand to make great and to strengthen everyone. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and we praise your glorious name. We turn that into a song, right? This just goes to show you some, some of the scriptures that talk about how big he is, how awesome, there's just not enough words to describe his goodness, his greatness, his authority, his power. This king is like no other king that we know. He's supreme in authority, and he rules his creation directly. He sits on the throne in heaven, and he looks over his subjects here. On earth, as it is in heaven. In order to know what his kingdom on earth would look like, we need to know what the kingdom of heaven looks like. Wouldn't that be interesting? Let's think about the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is in heaven. Well, what about heaven? We know, these are some things that we know about heaven. There are creatures created specifically to worship him. Revelation tells us most of this. There are myriads and myriads of angels. His subjects worship him. There's music and singing. Jesus sits at the right hand of God. He has charge of his angels, and we know that he sends them out on assignment, and there's order. We know that we all have work to do there. There's work to be done in heaven. Did you know that? You ever read that? There's work. There's, there's going to be work for us to do in heaven. 
There'll be no more striving, shame, anxiety, pain, worry, strife, no lack of provision, fear, hate, no broken bodies, no blind eyes. And there is joy, peace, perfect love, provision, there's health, there's a loving father. Again, Romans 14, 17 says, for the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Doesn't it sound like a place where there's just peace and joy? Righteousness, peace, and joy on earth as it is in heaven. So here's what has to happen for it to be on earth as it is in heaven. There has to be a kingdom exchange, a kingdom exchange. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We have to exchange kingdoms with him. We have to be created to worship him like the angels are. We worship him with music and singing like the angels do. He has charge over his angels in heaven. Does he have charge over us on earth? He sends the angels out on assignment. He sends us out on assignment. We'll have work to do in heaven. Guess what? We got work to do here. There's no striving, shame, anxiety, pain, none of that in heaven. Guess what? He doesn't want it here either. There is joy and peace and perfect provision in heaven. There's righteousness, peace, and joy in heaven, and you can have it on earth too. You don't have to wait till you get to heaven to seek righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Like I said, there's, an, there's a kingdom exchange. We exchange our kingdom with God when we become born again. Did you know that you have your own, your own kingdom, your own, your own place where you can rule and reign if you want? But when we become believers and born again, we take off our crowns and we put them at his feet. And we take the robe off and we put the robe on him. This is the divine exchange. This is the kingdom exchange that happens. We crown him and we give him a seat on our throne. Because when you exchange kingdoms, you don't share a throne. You don't share a throne. When you exchange kingdoms, you get up and you say, this seat is yours. This crown is yours. This robe is yours. Everything I own, everything I have belongs to you. King Jesus and you bow and you honor him because he's a mighty king he's a good king and that may sound like man I'm just going to give him everything how can that be I mean I don't get to keep anything well this is what happens he assumes responsibility for you when you give him everything, when you give him your crowns, your robe, your throne, your place of authority, your seat of authority, and you give it to him, he then takes responsibility. He puts all of it on. He sits down and he says, all right, I'm in charge now. And guess what you don't have to do? You don't have to figure it all out. You don't have to know every detail anymore. You don't have to strive and, and, and stay up just wringing your hands all the time about what's going to happen. You exchanged kingdoms. It's his responsibility. Now, he assumes responsibility for our lives, but are we responsible to hear him and follow him? Yeah, we're still subjects of the king. He says, go and we go. He says, do this and we do this. We're still subjects of the king and we still have things to do and we still have work to be done. But ultimately, he is responsible for the outcomes in your life if you've given him the throne, if you've given him place.
As long as we stay under his rule and reign, we can rest assured that he's faithful and he's just and he has our best interest in mind, that he'll not lead us into temptation, but he'll deliver us from evil, for his is the power and the glory. You know, being, being a subject to the king isn't just about going to church, participating a little bit, and trying not to cuss. I mean, that's part of it, okay? It's a, come on, it's part of it. But it's not, it's not the only thing it is. It's a total and a complete exchange of your life for his. And I think the church in general, big, big church, not connect, but I think the church in general forgot to tell people that. It's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. You're not half in, half out. You're either in the kingdom, under his rule and reign, or you're not. We're not adding him to our life like an accessory, like a purse, throwing it on our shoulder. I got some Jesus today, right? Oh, look at my Jesus. Wearing him like an accessory, putting him on and taking him off when we feel like it. I'm not, and I'm not even talking, come on guys, I'm not even talking about like being out there doing big sin. I'm talking about the little things. The little things. We take him on and off to do the little things that aren't very nice. We're living, breathing, and moving in the kingdom, in the domain of the king. And we're asking him to bring his kingdom and to land it squarely on our lives. That's what we're asking him. Bring your kingdom. Place it on me. Just smack me down with it. Saturate me with it. Make every pore in my body saturated with the kingdom of God. But there's a surrender that has to take place. You know, when armies used to go into battle before there were, you know, communication devices and all this stuff, flags were very important, right? Flags were very important. If you came under attack and you knew there was no way to win and that you needed to surrender, you would, you would toss something white onto the end of a pole or a stick and you would wave that white flag. And it would say, it would, it would signal to the other side, surrender, surrender. And some of us still holding our own flags with our symbology on it, toting it around, toting it around. This is what I stand on. This is what I stand on. When you need to put it down and pick up the surrender flag, the white surrender flag, I give up. I give up. I can't do it. I can't do it anymore. I give up. Come get me. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> Come feed me. I've been out here starving for way too long. There's a surrender that has to take place. Kings conquer lands and territories and sometimes assume, assume the subjects of that place. And we are the spiritual territory being taken by his kingdom. Freedom. I know this sounds crazy. Freedom is coming under and being submitted to. Doesn't that just sound counterintuitive? Freedom is coming under and being submitted to his rule and his reign. 
There's something freeing knowing that someone else is responsible for outcomes in my life. I'm not dismissed of responsibility. But it's good to know somebody bigger than me is at the wheel. <laughs> and I'm afraid we can't reap the rewards of the kingdom if we're not subject to the king. There's a coming under that has to happen for us to reap the many benefits of the rewards for being a part of the kingdom and for being under the king's rule and reign. You see, I'm trying to get across to you this morning how important surrender is in receiving everything that God wants to give you in the kingdom. How important surrender is. I want you free. We want you free. Freedom means coming under. And the culture doesn't understand that. But freedom means coming under. Coming under the rule and reign of someone who can run things so much better than we can. I can do this. I got this. I can take care of myself. I'm going to power through it. I'm going to... I'm going to, you know, well, did you pray? Like, sometimes I, I get frustrated with myself. I'm like, what? I, I didn't even pray about that. Like, <laughs> I'm under his rule and reign. I didn't even ask him. I didn't even talk to him about it. You know, I remember one time, I hope Kelly doesn't mind me sharing this, but we were in... Uh, a, a desperate financial situation years ago and we were doing everything we could to pay our bills and things circumstances had changed for us and we were in a tough situation jobs had changed things with housing changed like everything just changed all at once you ever been there yeah. kind of like it is now okay um, but anyway we were in we were in terrible financial straits and we were borrowing money monthly borrowing money monthly from our family and praise God they were able but we were holding on to our credit <laughs> it's terrible we were holding on to our credit score like it was the fourth member of the Godhead I mean we had that credit score Woo! that credit score wasn't going nowhere mm, that credit score man we were holding on to that thing for dear life for over a year, we did everything not to let that credit score drop. And I, do not hear me say, let your credit score drop. That's not what I'm here. But listen, when, when you got to choose between paying your bills or eating something, do you know what I'm saying? You got to eat something. And there are times when it comes down to that. And it's like I thought the Lord wasn't big enough to take care of of my family if I didn't have that credit score. And the Lord spoke to both of us and said, let it go. It was the hardest decision to make. And I'm not saying that is the best decision. I mean, there's probably other ways we could have done it, but the Lord helped us, and what we did is we called our creditors, and we said, hey, this is a situation we're in, and we need, just need to let you know that we need some help and some grace and some mercy. And, you know, everybody that we called gave it to us. Everybody we called gave it to us. They were gracious to us. They put us through to other people who put us through to other people, and we worked out a system where we could pay our bills and eat at the same time and not have to ask people for money. It hurt our credit score. But you know what? We got back on good footing. But it was the Lord, it was that holdout. It was the holdout, that one thing we were holding on to. And that's not even a big deal. I mean, like honestly. But I just remember hanging on to that for dear life and thinking, I, we, we're just going to, we won't be able to get anything ever again if I don't hold on to this credit score. You know, just so dumb. Like when I, when I think about it now. But it was a holdout. It was one of those things we were holding on to, and I was my own provider, and I was the one that was going to solve it. And instead, 
God was saying, you are not your provider. I am your provider. Would you let me do it? See, when we're holding on to things that we're supposed to give to him, he can't do the things for us that he wants to do. Because there is a kingdom exchange. I give you this, you give me that. And he can't give you that if your hand is not open and empty. If you're still, you've, you've seen, you've seen the, the move, the little videos and stuff about the, the baboon or whatever that gets his, puts his hand into the, the cave wall to get the grubs or whatever, closes his fist, and then he can't let go, and then he's stuck onto the wall. Have you seen that before? He's stuck to the wall. He will die there holding on to the grubs in his hand. He literally will stay there for days and days and days and will die there because he's got grubs in his hand and he doesn't realize he can let them go and be free. You got to let go of the things that you're hanging on to for dear life in order for him to put something different in your hand. There are benefits of a fully surrendered life. Psalms 103, 1 through 4 says this. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all our sins, heals all our diseases, redeems your life from the pit, and crowns you with love and compassion. Wait a minute, I thought I crowned him. You did, and guess what? He turned around and crowned you with love and compassion. Speaking of benefits, I just want to read this to you. Matthew 6, 25 through 34. It's a bit of reading, but I want to read it to you. The heading in the word that I was reading um, said the cure for anxiety. That was the heading for this scripture right here. To me, these are benefits, by the way. For this reason, I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you'll eat or what you'll drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? And who of you being worried can add a single hour to his life? And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you? You have little faith. Do not worry then saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But, but, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. And each day has enough trouble of its own. All these things will be added. What will be added? The things in life that are needed. That's what's going to be added. What you need, you will have. If we're submitted to the rule and reign of Christ. Seek ye first the kingdom. He'll make sure you're provided for. He'll take care of your needs. You may not have everything that you ever wanted, but you'll have everything that you ever needed in him. Let him be the Lord of your entire life, your every minute, your every day, your every month, your every year, let him be the Lord of all of it. I want to read Romans 14, 17 one more time. We're about to close up. 
For the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's what living in the kingdom of God should give us when we seek it. Righteousness, peace, and joy. We won't even talk about righteousness, y'all. We won't go there today. That's a whole nother <laughs> message right there. But righteousness is, is key in this, right? Five things I want to share, and there were five practical points, I guess is what I should call them. Number one, seek his kingdom first, and he will add everything needed to you. Let me just ask a question. How many of you have seen the hand of God come through in your life during this weird COVID season? Come on. Seriously. The hand of God moved in your life. Look around at the hands. Hold them up. Hold them up. Look around, people. Look around. Look. Look, 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 look. Look. Right. Thank you. Put your hands down. Put your hands down. You know why? You're seeking his kingdom. And he loves you. And he's crowned you. <laughs> Ask him to show you what the holdouts are. Because if you don't know what the holdouts are, how can you give it back to him, right? Just like me talking about that credit score, hanging on to that. What are some of those things you're hanging on to for dear life? They're the holdouts that you think you got to control and fix. Ask him to show you. He will. Ask him to show you. He'll be riding down the road. and be like, hold out. Oh, yeah, you're right, Lord. Number three, surrender your life to him a completely without abandon. Just make a fresh surrender if that's what you need to do. Wave the white flag again. Number four, share the kingdom of God with others. Your kingdom come, your will be done. The kingdom should be expanding. That's another message too. But the kingdom doesn't stop with you. It starts with you. We should be expanding the kingdom. Pray daily, number five, pray daily that his kingdom would come and his will would be done in your life. I can't tell you the number of times that that's just my prayer throughout the day. Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I say it when the crazy little children are acting, acting foolish. <laughs> I say, Lord, your kingdom come right here because I need it so bad because I'm about to lose my mind. <laughs> So I just want you to close your eyes for just a moment. We're going to pray, okay? We're going to pray. Father, we love you. And Lord, we, we know that we're to exchange kingdoms with you. And we also know that there are places we haven't made exchanges yet. And so... Whatever territory or holdouts that we have today, Father, I pray that you would reveal them to us. And Lord God, that we would make an exchange with you, Father. That there would be a surrender in our hearts and that we would give it to you. Whether it be our language, the way we talk about ourselves. And I just feel like the Lord dropped that in. Just dropped that just now the way you talk about yourself, the way you see yourself. You need to think and see yourself like he sees you because he loves you so much. Lord, we give those things to you right now. Reveal them to us as we're going about our business, Father, as we're struggling through things, Father God. Just point it out to us. This is a holdout. Can I have this? Just drop it on us, Father. We'll give it to you. Thank you, Lord. We give you everything this morning, Father. There's nothing you can't have. There's nothing you can't have. You can have our time. You can have our efforts. 
can have my thoughts, you can have my actions, you can have my money, you can have my things, you can have me. We crown you with many crowns this morning. We crown you with many crowns this morning. We get up off of our seat of authority and we say, here it is. We give it to you this morning. And if you feel like you need somebody to agree in prayer with you about anything, and I mean anything, whether it's related to this message or not, there's carpeted areas over on my right and on my left. If you just want to get alone before God, you can do that. Or there'll be some people standing on both sides, Pastor Kelly, Pastor Ted. If you need prayer, they'll be glad to pray with you. Okay? But I don't want you to let this moment go by and you not respond in some way. I just encourage you to respond in some way today. Let's go ahead and stand up at this time.
Jesus, we surrender to you. Lord, we don't hold anything back. Lord, you're either king of it all or you're not king at all. We give it all to you, Lord. Lord, I'm sure in other people's lives and in my life sometimes there's these questions, well, what, what, if I, what if I do this? What if I give over control? How do I know that it'll be okay? How do I know everything will work out like I want it to if I, if I give over control? We don't. But what we do know, God, is that you're good and that you're trustworthy. Jesus, we know that you're honorable. We know that you're faithful. We know that you have our best interests at heart. Lord, we know when life happens, when pain happens, that you are the place that we can go to prop ourselves up. You are the place that we can go to seek comfort. Jesus, you said in this world we'd have trouble, but fear not, you'd overcome the world. So Jesus, if you're our king and you're greater than everything we experience, we are in good hands. Jesus, we give it all to you. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, it's hard for him to be king if you don't even know him. If you don't know Jesus, you've been away from Jesus for a long time, you want to make him the Lord of your life today, I encourage you, today is the day of salvation. If that's you, if you're watching online, if you're here in person, and you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, that means the supreme in authority. If you want to make him your king, just pray this with me. Pray, Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. Jesus, I believe that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus, I believe that you paid the ultimate price by dying on a cross for me in my place where I should have been. Jesus, I believe that not only did you die, but you came back from the grave you presented yourself as King and Lord before your disciples for many days. And Jesus, I believe you're at the right hand of the Father in heaven now. Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I confess my sin. I'm, I'm a sinner. I confess it. Forgive me, Lord. Bring me into your family. give you the rest of my life, Jesus. I submit you as my Lord and my King so that I can have the rest of eternity with you in heaven. Thank you, Father, for your Son. In Jesus' name, amen. If that's you today, you pray that prayer. Welcome to the family. Really love to hear from you. Really love to hear about that. If that's you online, you know, if that's you here, there's connect cards, please fill it out. Drop one in the box. Let us know. Bring it to one of the pastors. If you're online, you go to connectchurchjacks.org. At the bottom of the page, there's a connect card. Fill that out. Let us know. We want to celebrate that win with you. We want to celebrate that with you. Just encourage you to do that. Hey, listen. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. God bless you. We love you. We celebrate moms. Put yourself in a position to receive a blessing from your Heavenly Father. Church, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift the light of His countenance on you and give you His peace. In Jesus' name, God bless you. We love you. Have a great week. See you Wednesday. Small groups start this week. Men's and women's groups. Connect Kids Midweek will be right here. God bless you. We love you.